My name is Frank, and I'm sentimental. Uh, I guess you could say I'm a collector of things. Ever since I was little, I've been, I've always was really good at taking care of my stuff and um, keeping it as, as uh, close to functional as possible. Toys, books, uh, games, pretty much everything. Little stickers. I, I remember saving stickers and albums because I didn't want to waste them by putting them on the wall and, and uh, not being able to get them back. Um, and that, it's, it's driven my wife crazy, I'm sure. And we recently moved, maybe not so recently, it's like two years now, and boxes, boxes of stuff came with us uh, from the old house to our new home. And I, I don't know, just one day it occurred to me, we're all kind of locked in at this moment, for a very long time now we've we've kind of been sheltering in place with all our stuff and i started thinking like where why what what's in these boxes what's what's inside them why do i keep them uh and i realized it, a lot of this was like it was almost like an unboxing video uh every time i found a new crate or cardboard box or or bag or something that had been sealed away for years opening it up for the first time I didn't really know what to expect, and I think it's a it's going to be an interesting experience sharing that with all of you. So let's let's try it. Okay, well let's um, let's start with one of these bags my mother packed for me recently. And uh, see what we got. Walk down memory lane. All right. well, pretty obviously sticking right out there. And I, my guess is that you're going to see a lot of dusts in this series. Oof. This is a... Um, you know, I remembered this differently than it is. This is a basketball game, helpfully referred to as basketball game here, home visitors. Uh, but I remembered it being a soccer game. I don't know why I remembered it being a soccer game. It may be because I, the last time I saw this, oh, <laughs> the last time I think I saw this, I had, uh, I'd gone on a trip to the Middle East uh, to visit some cousins and family and what have you. And I think this is what, either what I brought back with me, I think. I may have brought it back. I don't know if I brought it with me as like the one thing I would play with there. Or I brought it back with me. I'm pretty sure I brought it back with me. And, it, you know, very American. Basketball is an incredible is a very American sport. And I don't know why, for some reason, I remembered it as soccer um, or football everywhere else in the world. So interesting. So basically how it works is uh, I think you press the button and I guess these numbers connect. There it is. Yeah, so the two was two on this side, seven on that side. So this would be a, that he's now on the one field. I'll center it this way. He's now on one here. Or, I believe it's an eight here. Yep. Okay, so boom. And I guess the goal is to try to make a basket. So I, I chuckled a moment ago because I noticed uh, something that passed Frank, who was very, very um, anal retentive about his toys. Uh, <laughs> what, he had, what he had done was... Uh, tape the rules on how to play or the instructions I should say on how to play in the back with little pieces of looks like duct tape maybe on the back which is which is rare I mean my my go-to was masking tape as a kid because I didn't know any better but this time I got lucky he did duct tape so it stuck a game of skill and chance for two opponents and there are instructions on how to play and everything such an odd game. I was never really into uh, sports as a kid. Uh, 
humble brag, but uh, for some reason I do remember this game, although I may be conflating it with like one of those water basketball games that, uh, that I used to have back in the day. Uh, also, I think a relic of a forced trip where I, I just assumed I would have nothing to do. Um, wow. All right. Interesting. Let's see what else we got. Some of these are harder to make out than others. All right. This is neat. Uh, Mm. 24 car case. Ooh, shaky. 24 holds 24 die cast mini cars. Will hold most Hot Wheels, which tells me that this is not an official Hot Wheels product. Uh, fast 111s. Fast 111s. I don't remember that at all. Uh, Matchbox. And most of the diecast mini cars, because there was a time where diecast mini cars were huge. Um, this was from the Terra Toy Company of Glendale, New York. I am not. Vi I remember the case. I specifically remember how it was kind of like little, like a little janky here. But I don't remember exactly where I got the case. I believe my father was friends with a guy who had like a local toy company. Uh, like, a, I guess an importer or something. And in exchange for like goods and services for working for him, he would give his son some of the extra toys. That's that's a story I only heard when I was an adult. I, I didn't know where I got a lot of these weird 70s era toys. And apparently they were just like overflow. So let's see what I got. Let's see what I was collecting back in the day. Wow. Uh, I remember all of these. I, I honestly remember all of these. I couldn't tell you when it was closed what was in here. But now that I see them, I, I, if you had snuck one in, I would not, I would know. Okay, so immediately, this is the key, the turbo key, that will allow one of these cars, like you put it in the back, and it shoots out. Uh, if I recall correctly, it may be this car, the Firebird. Um, I don't know if that's true or if this is a push push wheel. Uh, I think a lot of the parts for these cars are probably going to, if they were spring loaded, the springs may have rusted. Or, definitely feels like there was something that worked in this. So this is a little Firebird, right? There's... So I'm trying, there's a release. So here it is. There's a little release button here. I remember. And there is something that fits in there and this does fit in, but I don't know if it's, maybe there's another key. Maybe it's a different one. There's that Firebird. So here's the thing I did a lot as a kid, cause I'm, I wasn't really a car kid. But um, I would definitely was a Transformers kid, so I would... Oh, I already remember which one it is for. Uh, I would uh, pretend like these cars were Transformers. Uh, for example, this was obviously Optimus Prime. Um, even though he's... This is not even like... This isn't Matchbox. This isn't... This is Hot Wheels. This is like a really dinky... Mini Might is the brand. And this is plastic, and this is... Um, guess some sort of not it's like a metallic plastic it is plastic but um and i can't remember if this comes off or if i'm actually thinking of the optimus prime toy that i did have uh but let's not force it i think this guy wow so yeah this is the one that had the turbo and there it fits in perfect okay so i think this guy was the one who had the turbo launch and you could there's there's like a rubber band not a rubber band uh spring or something in there and i'm sure if i tried it would latch on and then you would squeeze this and when you squeezed it it would release that little clip that holds it in and it would shoot across the room uh, <laughs> so and this is a kidco not to be confused with the movie kidco which no one remembers 
um, from 1980, Hong Kong toy. So I definitely rebel. Wow. So this was uh, the um, the General Lee for me, a move a show I used to watch all the time, Dukes of Hazard. Um, no idea. And it's it's complicated about how how problematic it was. There was a time where it was just sort of a um, lazy stand-in um, before anybody put any real thought into it. But uh, I guess that's that's a that's a conversation for another day that um, most people probably shouldn't be ha having. You should not don't force it. But I do see the actual General Lee down there. Okay, that's a spoiler. Um, okay, wow. Yeah, Ugh. amazing. Never, never even thought about it as a kid, of course. So this guy, I remember, had a rubber tip because the worry was much like fabled Boba Fett's rocket launcher. This would injure someone. Although I guess this is more of a choking hazard than than uh, anything. But it, it uh, was a little softer. I don't remember. I think I, I, this was just sort of like a like super sci-fi vehicle in my imagination like it was something flash gordon would drive as it were race car i remember this dump truck play art hong kong i almost like part of me doesn't even want to rearrange these i don't i <laughs> I just want to keep everything the way it was in a ridiculous, for, for whatever ridiculous reason. Um, wow, this brings me back. So uh, there's another dump truck here. This one is actually in metal, and this is a, an early match box. Um, I know there are people who are big fans who are going to be like, pick them all up, show me all of them. Uh, I'm sorry for the blurriness. I'm going to try to focus... Hmm. Yeah, so your basic express trucking company. Uh, I probably just really like this because it had a little plastic wheel, I can remember. And it was a Hot Wheels and like a, a um, one of those cars somebody crafted or kitted out with spoilers and what have you. Amazing. This guy was also, in my mind, a transformer. Some kind of fire truck. And I remember this being loose in there. And yep, you could see the windshield just kind of flopping around. Uh, th this definitely looks like someone took their uh, um, station wagon and decked it out. That may have been the, the Griswolds of a family vacation car, in my mind. It's hard to remember why... I did what I did with some of these. Yep, another one of those. Interesting. Interesting choice on some of these. Just going to go through them quickly. Oh, speedy re removal. I don't know if I ever thought of this as a, uh, like a snow shovel or what have you. Uh, I don't ever remember thinking about it. Snow, dirt, or sand in that way. And so far, every one of these toys, including the stupid little fictions I came up with in my head, uh, including the ones that look uh, a little bit like they are, you know, close to Gen 1 Transformers. Jazz. I thought, I, I'm pretty sure I thought this was Jazz or like this could stand for Jazz. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's look at the, the, the second layer of this. And what do I got? So I already showed you General Lee. Uh, did his doors open? I can't remember. I don't think so. No. Here's the General Lee, which, you know, it is a, a moment in time. This, uh, I think I used to think was Knight Rider because I was like, oh, this, this would work as Knight Rider. But then, hey, guess what? Actual Knight Rider. And if I recall correctly, this did do something. Maybe it was one of those you were pulled back or maybe not. But anyways, very nice, good condition, Knight Rider. Very cool. Um, all right. This was a cop car that would chase the General Lee. So much subtext in that. But all right. Uh, there, this is a police taxi. Star Taxi Police. 
I don't know anything about this. It's a Hot Wheels thing. It may be a specific reference to something that I don't remember. And I don't think I knew at the time. And there definitely wasn't an internet for me to look it up. One of my older Hot Wheels here. Cool. Wish I had that real car, right? Um, I don't know why he was upside down, but he definitely had... This had some sort of wheelie popping mechanism, which I may have just broke. No, it came out again. Uh, it's a Porsche leaping. And I, if I recall correctly... It just, you, you pulled it back and it would just, it basically with the wheel pops out, it does a, it popped the wheelie. Um, another, some of these cars were just extras in my various productions. I'm leaving two for the end. This fire truck was cool, but I don't think other than maybe as a stand in, I don't think that, this was definitely a sci-fi vehicle. Uh, it doesn't matter if it had no, Nothing to do with science fiction. I clearly, it is from the 80s future. <laughs> what the 80s thought of as the future. I don't remember what this does. Maybe it was the way of removing this part. Let's see if I could get that to work. As I recall, there was a way, like maybe I used that to fuel him up. There's like a little, little peg there where you can put stuff in. I think I imagine that's where you would fuel. And anyways, this little crazy guy was definitely the vehicle I thought we'd be f drive flying in the 21st century. And then this precious guy for the end, Woody Woodpecker. Wow, look at the look at the job paint job on that. And I, you know, I'm sure some of this was worn off from age, but. It certainly didn't spread out like that from age. His hand is up in a very awkward, very awkward position. Um, he's lounging back. I don't remember there being many episodes with Woody Woodpecker in a, uh, in a car. And it's from Corgi, 1981. Walter Lance Productions. Woody Woodpecker is fascinating to me because I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like, whoops, sorry. It feels like it was... Uh, one of the few things that never really got spread out and redone and recontextualized over and over and over again for the for the 21st century it was like something that just was good for its moment did not really have ancient roots but at the same time isn't around anymore because we don't count that movie anyways uh yeah my car Car chase, car case. I may have called it car chase a couple of times in this. Car case super. I am shocked I remember any of these, to be perfectly honest. I know I, I vaguely remember I played with cars a, a little bit as a kid. I just don't have any strong memories of it whatsoever. Um, or else I didn't think I did, but I guess I did. And that's interesting. Um, I know there's a few more things here. That are in the same... I guess I put all my car toys... I'm sorry again. I guess I put all my car toys uh, in the same area. So uh, I will not... I don't know if I want to do all the car stuff at once. And I also don't want to make this overly long. Because there are plenty of boxes for me to open up like this. Uh, sports and car toys is not what I expected. This thing, however, I almost opened it up just now and I did actually open the lid and I'm like wait I'm supposed to do this on camera uh it's definitely a Christmassy themed box which is not a thing I would have celebrated a lot so I have no idea what's in it I did get a peek and it looks vaguely familiar but I am not certain so let's see what's in here okay interesting Oh, wow. First of all, classic dust. So this has every day of the week on it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, dates? I think this was a cal Oh, this is a calendar. This is a calendar. That, and I think it was also a bank. Let's see if there's any money in here. Is it? Is it a bank? I think it was a bank. I think... I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to open it. Oh, maybe it's maybe it was a combo. So if you see it moves around like this. Then the, here's a brief, brief story. My father 
and mother ran a um, weird store. Uh, it, it was, I guess, technically a it was a deli. Deli was in the name, right? Great Falls Deli, and uh, but it was like a convenience store, almost a bodega but bigger. And they sold all sorts of odd things, not just food and and groceries, but um, some of the weird things that they sold were things like this. Um, growing up, I think I thought this was some related to Rubik's cubes, right? Because there's a little bit of a slide, and you and you you know slide these pieces around and form a pattern and figure something out it may have been how to open this up there may be a way of opening this up unfortunately i have no idea there's no there's no like maker mark on this the box itself was maybe not even for it and has nothing inside it um it doesn't seem like there's anything in there yeah, maybe there is it does like it's the rattling is confusing now that i look at it as an adult it feels like it's a calendar maybe even a perpetual calendar that i'm supposed to move these things around and make it accurate for the month I'm in, which who would do this? Why? But um, yeah, there's a bunch of toys or items, knickknacks that are like this uh, that we had, uh, including odd shaped Rubik's cube esque things like a Rubik's pyramid and a Rubik's sphere is what I'm thinking of specifically that had those multiple color slides. You'd move them around almost like those puzzles where you got to try to figure out, uh, the face that was in the puzzle, but, um, uh, never had enough, you know, just eventually you give up, you pry it open and then you move them around in the right position. Whoops. All right. Uh, let's get these out of the way. All right, one more thing, another odd toy that is not not the G.I. Joes and Transformers and what have you that I remember growing up. Although I do have a box upstairs that has the words Transformers, two words, <laughs> written on them. So, hey, subscribe for more, right? That's coming soon. This guy is just in the bag, so not really much to open up. Remote Control Hydro Racer Speedboat. I'm surprised this is from Mattel, sorry, Mattel right there, uh, because I really thought this was some, like, you know, ancient tour. It's an indoor-outdoor water toy. Uh, and as I recall, this is a sort of a speedboat and a remote control over there. You can kind of see this. Besides, it's in the box, but I actually did play with this, I think, or tried. Um, and I believe it was just a remote control boat, but, like, that it was tethered to the remote. It wasn't, like, a wireless thing which made it almost worthless on the high seas. Uh, yeah. So let's see if there's any other signs on this. It's, uh, again, a, a hydro racer. Cool box art. Uh, turns bodies of water into worlds of fun. Goes forward, stops, turns around, lights, turns right and left. Powered by four alkaline sea batteries, not include sea batteries. Where would you even put it? see i mean i guess maybe maybe in it maybe in the remote i can't tell how thick that is it looks pretty thick i guess it could be in the remote um yeah you would hope to put it in the remote because otherwise the boat would have to be super buoyant so i'm relatively certain this still works i don't remember why i have it i remember being very disappointed in this thing not necessarily when i got it because i think despite being in the box this was like a second hand thing or like it was maybe my sister's or something um uh or like i, I honestly don't remember but uh the point is that it it did not work well <laughs> and uh it wasn't a thing i was really interested in ever there's a lot of sport toys and outdoor toys and i was an indoor kid but th I'm, I'm curious i might take this out find c batteries somewhere and uh see if it works on the seas i'm sorry about that so uh that was cool that was really interesting it, a, a lot of memories came flooding back in this and uh it's it really does feel grounding it does if it, it feels like i understand why i shift these boxes back and forth I don't know if I would keep them, honestly. I think just looking through them once more was almost enough. Maybe pick and choose some of the ones in there that really mean something to me. It's it's odd. Those those cars, the case it came in, 
it, I could remember how I played with them back when I played with them. And um, including the, you know, like I said, the how how to make them stand-ins for uh, for Transformers or something I, I knew I wanted but maybe I couldn't afford or, or whatever. It's um, really neat. And I, I hope you um, think it's neat too. Uh, I hope you join me in this unboxing <laughs> experiment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out a few people here uh, that I think might really enjoy doing something like this. Uh, Al, Al Baldino, I think you'd, I'd love doing this, and I think you have plenty of piles you can go through right now. Eric from Adventures in Collecting. Uh, Eric and Dave, I think you guys would have fun with this. And Elise, uh, Elise Explosion, I think you two would have a good time just picking a random box and uh, opening it up and telling us why why you have it. Why, why were you uh, keeping it for all this time? I think it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks.